I'd like to say greetings and peace to each and every one of you. My name is Lonzie Green, and I'm currently the interim director of the Martin Luther King Center. And I'd like to welcome you to this celebration, the release of our brother, Nelson R. Mandela. And for those of you who may not know the history about him, I'd like to take a few minutes just to share something about him. Nelson R. Mandela was born July 18, 1918, in Sarawata. His parents were members of the royal family of the Tumbu people. He received his primary education in a segregated African school. He earned a law degree at Fort Hare and Eastern Cape. As an attorney, Mandela was keenly aware of the numerous injustice suffered by the South African blacks. In order to combat the oppressive system of apartheid, Mandela assumed leadership of the African National Congress, ANC, in 1960. Thus, Nelson R. Mandela and his freedom fighters became rebels with the cause, and that cause being the liberation of South Africans and Africans all over the world. When the ANC attempted to correct the, the, the system, Mandela, along with several of his ANC comrades, were arrested in 1962 for treason. Mr. Mandela, for the sake of his people, put his career, his prestige, and life itself on the line. Yes, sir. So now, 27 years later, we celebrate with much jubilation the release of Mandela. And we want him to know that his years of suffering was not in vain. His release should signal in us a new commitment to the struggle of freedom and justice for all. Right now we have the invitation by Reverend Clarence Hello. We have had the libations of our ancestors by our brother. We will now share the experience of as Africans in America. The invocation, would you bow your heads? And I would ask the drums play softly to give us uh, the presence of our ancestors. May we pray. God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, Thou who and I, through Thy grace, has brought us to this place. We are grateful for the gift of Thy grace and the blessing of Thy bounty, O Lord. We are grateful today, Lord, that You've allowed us to assemble here together in this very special place for this very special time. For You are the God of all of creation, and in all of creation You see all things. As we come, Lord, today, recognizing that out of chaos came a world that you created, Lord. Today, we come out of chaos, celebrating the liberation, not only of a man by the name of Mandela, but we share in the partial liberation of a people. For we know, Lord, that you are yet with them in struggle. For while you have opened the doors for Mandela to see once again this side of his life, we know that yet there is work to be done. As we come today, we thank thee, Lord, for the power of your spirit in the lives of all African people everywhere and all people who love justice, who have stood by this cause and stood up for this cause. We thank thee, Lord, today that you have been with us in our ups and in our downs, in our pains and in our joys. We are so grateful today that the God of all people, particularly the God of Africa's children, is still yet liberating us from the chains of oppression. Not only is he liberating the children of Africa, but all over the world, in Europe, and in many lands beyond. The Lord of liberation is yet liberating. Liberating men of European descent and women from illusions of superiority and bringing them to a better awareness of true community. We thank you today, O oh Lord, for the liberation of all, both body, mind, and soul. And as we come today, O oh God, we ask that thou would empower us with the power that never before to continue the struggle, to press forward the high mark of liberation that Jesus the Christ showed us how to achieve. We come today thanking thee for the gathering of these, your people, in this assembly. We thank thee from all walks of life, from all colors of life, both men. And Lord, we spread a special blessing today upon this gathering of African people from Africa and America. 
We pray now, Lord, for this city, yea, even for this city, that it might too stand up to the true call of liberation, and that all of its people everywhere might be able to experience the joy of freedom and walking in a new day. As we go forward in this ceremony, as we lift up the name of Mandela, of one who taught us how to struggle, and one who taught us how to die, and one who taught us how to live again. We live in the name of Jesus, of Yahshua the Messiah. We thank you today for his life and for his witness. And now may the Spirit of the Lord anoint all of us to do his will in his world. And when we like many others must stick our swords in the sands of time, close our hymn books and Bibles to study war no more. But we will turn our spears into plowshares. We ask that you will be with us then, O oh Lord. Go with us forevermore. Give us a sweet peace in eternity. It's in thy name that we pray. And all of us come up together said. That same spirit, that same presence, is here right now. I dare you. I dare you to take Jesus at his word. I dare you. I double dog dare you to walk where Jesus walked. I dare you to do what Jesus did. Because you know what? If we did, we would walk out this room right now. Rather than going to the building we call the church, we will walk down on Oakland Avenue, Grand Avenue, 2nd Avenue, Bonton, Hatcher. We'll go down to New Stead and we'll feed the hungry, clothe the naked, visit those who are in prison, and we won't wait. or whether we are in fine clothes, we are just do the will of God because that's what Jesus did. So if you hung up on what you're doing on Sunday morning at 11 o'clock, you need to read the Bible again and understand that Jesus was not about ritual, but rather about liberation. That's what it's about today. I dare you to become a part of this faith and this ministry in this city. We're changing if you believe that. Praise God. I thank God for the presence today. I thank God. I'm happy. I thank God. You happy? I thank God today for being there. I thank God for allowing you. know how many of you are going to come out today. We were standing back there wondering if anybody going to come out today. We said a week ago we didn't know who was going to come. We went out by faith and said the Lord By God, not wait for a crisis. If we could go down to the to the uh, what's called Daryl, where's down? Uh, uh, Brother Daryl was sent 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 uh Shangangas shop and visit him and and shout at him and buy his beautiful picture and Ruth, the brother with Ruth, and the spy from beautiful things from his brother.
challenge today. We have this other yard and uh, the Cozy sisters, are they here? And Cozy, are they here? Wonderful, I'm glad we're waiting. Please come up to the stand. Their words. And we want them to come. And I ask that you would hear them. Hear them, don't just listen to them, but hear them. But every time I listen to a brother, these brothers from Africa know I come to your function, I sit, I observe, and I listen. Because I want to hear something from home. Have you ever been in that way before? I want to hear a word from home. What the home folk got to say. And the Ghanaian celebration is coming up. We got Brother Charles Bainey back right there. We want to say a word about that so we know that people can, if they can come to the Ghanaian celebration of liberation, y'all need to go because y'all ain't seen no, no stuff. Well, y'all ain't seen no beautiful people standing up like kings and queens. You mentioned that it has been free for 10 years. We have a sister, Yahara Works. If you don't know Yahara, an international model, but more, she is an international spokesperson for Africa. She goes all over the world speaking in the of Africa. And she is from Ethiopia, beautiful Ethiopia. And at this time, I will ask the mayor to come before us and read a proclamation, and after she finishes, each of the other special guests have words to say. Good afternoon to you all and thank you for being here. I didn't think I would be able to come because today is the beginning of the National Convention for Homes for the Jewish Asian. My own mother is in the home here at Golden Acres, which is just a wonderful place which takes care of everyone, rich or poor, who really need help as they go into their advanced years. But I was able to find just a few moments and I wanted to come to say to all of you that I appreciate this celebration. I myself am just, I cannot tell you how happy I was when Nelson Mandela was, re was released. It stands for so much and we are all committed, we're all committed to seeing that everyone, everyone in this world, enjoy, in world enjoys freedom and justice to what, which they deserve. We were all created equal and we must make sure that we all have equal rights uh, Mr. Lipscomb, your council, Councilman Lipscomb was supposed to read the proclamation and I will stand here while he does that. Mr. Lipscomb. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Good afternoon. Mr. Green, the Senate Director. Mayor Strauss. Commissioner John Marty Price. Ms. Ruth Wyrick, my board appointee. And Dr. Glover, distinguished uh, people on the podium here. We were all somewhat elated by the good news about the release of Mr. Mandela. But I'm thankful to the mayor and the city council members also for taking a position to reaffirm our position that we would not be faked out of position on our commitment to sanctions. Right. Right. This is the resolution. Whereas the city of Dallas applauds the release of Nelson Mandela, African National Congress leader, as a symbolic step toward political change in the Republic of South Africa and Namibia, and whereas while Mr. Mandela's release sends a positive signal, from the South African government, the struggle to end racial oppression, and the unjust and discriminatory laws of South Africa and Namibia continues. And whereas the South African government continues its policy of racial segregation, its opposition to majority rule under a one person, one vote system, and its enforcement of laws that mandate discrimination on the basis of race and color and on the legal system, Called apartheid. And why is the city of Dallas, while encouraged by recent events in the Republic of South Africa and Namibia, continues to object to apartheid 
and to the unjust and discriminatory laws of South Africa and Namibia. And where is the city of Dallas decides to reaffirm its policy and regulations prohibiting or restricting certain types of business transactions between the city and individuals or business entities that have particular business relationship with South Africa or Namibia, they are therefore being resolved by the city council of the city of Dallas, section one, that the city policies adopted pursuant to ordinance number 20,200, which prohibits or restricts certain types of business transactions between the city and individuals or business entities that have particular business relationship with South Africa or Namibia, as set forth in section 2-37.1.2 through 2.37.1.9. To purchase and contract of Chapter 2 administration of the Dallas City Code are hereby reaffirmed. Section 2, this is the last one, that this resolution shall take effect immediately from and after this passage in accordance with the Charter of the City of Dallas. And it is accordance for resolve. The struggle continues. <laughs> Dr. Glover, Mr. Green, Ms. Warwick, all of my brothers and sisters from Africa, all praise is due to Allah, to God, to Yahshua, to Yahweh, to the God of Martin and Malcolm, to the God of Medgar and Marcus, to the God of Mickey, to the God of Mandela, your God and my God. And to all of my Bilalian brothers and sisters, I say, Assalamu alaikum. Mandela, the word Mandela. You must understand something about our African heritage, and then you will understand something about Mandela. Yahweh, work, Mandela. But ladies and gentlemen, I come to you today to say that as the city of Dallas said, it's not enough to release Mandela. There's something that happens in this city that is not uniquely strange in this country. I was in Scotland about three months ago and Mandela Square is in downtown Edinburgh. What do we have in Dallas? It's okay to talk about Fantasy Harris and Dr. L.G. Vixen and Julius C. Trajan, but what about Mandela? All right. What about something international in this city? Right. If this city can continue to name thoroughfares after Klansmen and buildings in downtown Dallas, and surely a man that has labored for the liberation of his people, we can name something in this city after Mandela. Brothers and sisters in South Dallas and in Dallas understand what they are. We are the ones that have the problem. They haven't named things in downtown Dallas any place else because we have not asked. But we must move beyond asking. We must demand that the name of Mandela live on. Not only in our memory, but in their memories also. And so in the name of justice and liberation, I invite you today to re-pledge yourselves to the commitment of saying that understanding man, especially you brother, man, 
Mandela, an understanding of the African name Mandela. Recommit yourself to the struggle for peace and justice. I don't 
listening like, oh, you are from Ethiopia. You are the only Ethiopian person we see everywhere in South Dallas. And those Ethiopian people don't come here, either Nigerians or Ghanaians and others. You don't like us. But you have to understand, we love you, all of us. If I love you, all Ethiopians will love you. It's just a matter of, you know, different culture. And then sometimes they don't know, how, we don't know how to approach and what to do, where to start and how to talk and where to go. And we don't know. And you have been here before us and you have to help us also. and African brothers and sisters. I had a, a night, a party night in the name of all African nights in order to help the Dallas homeless benefit for the Dallas Family Shelter. Because this shelter has been helping African people. And I know Liberians, Nigerians, Ghanaians have been, you know, got help from this uh, family shelter. And therefore, I try to bring all Africans together, and I have seen, I mean, I try my best. I really try for seven years to bring African Americans and Africans together, but sometimes it has been so hard for me, you know, with my profession, and then as I said, I'm not a politician. And it's, I'm sick and tired of these negative things, like, oh, African Americans don't like us, and African don't like us. Please, from today, here we are maybe about 200 people. If 200 of us <coughs> think, start thinking positive and say, you are from Africa, you are my brother, in fact, you are my cousin, you are my relative. Yeah. And then African people also, the same thing, you could say, you are my brother and sister, you are my relative, you are my blood. If somebody has to come and to keep black person, in this room here, there's no way for me to survive. I will die because I'm black. So you have to understand, if something comes against African Americans, it's for all of us. The fact an Ethiopian, an Ethiopian for the first time in the United States of America, for the first time, an Ethiopian was killed by a white person, skin hair, because of his skin color. I don't mean all white people are bad either. I have many white friends, very supportive people, very nice people. They are on, my, on our side. Not a lot of color. But I just want to leave this positive message with you today. Please, when you see an African person, because she's bumbling or because he's bumbling, because she or he doesn't speak perfect, English, I mean, the way you speak, like, you know what I mean, or brother and sister, and this kind of pronunciation, don't laugh at them, don't ignore them, try to understand them. Thank you. Thank you. I want to thank God, first of all, for the opportunity to be here. And secondly, I just really want to commend Reverend Glover and also present here because this is the first time that I am a South African in the city of Dallas that I've seen anything like this. And I think you know, I've gone to rallies, I've gone to, uh, to meetings, but an organization which is trying to put African brothers and sisters with African American brothers and sisters is just so exciting to me, I just cannot even explain it. Well, shortly I was supposed to be here to tell a little bit about my personal background as a South African. I might not sound like a South African, but I am. I was born and raised in Johannesburg and came here when I was 11 years old, which was in 1973. And yes, the question is, have, did you, the first question that always comes up in people's minds, did you experience some of that, was going, that which is going on right now in South Africa and has been going on for the last three Yes. And yes, the answer is most definitely. And uh, I, uh, we came here in 73, this was just before the 1976 riots. Those who are not familiar with the 76 riots, they started uh, when the, uh, the white South African regime wanted to start to teach Afrikaans, which is the Dutch, uh, Dutch German dialect. In the Africans were from all over the world. 
from Africa, from the Caribbean, from England, from South America, from America, from Australia, and that we can set an international African agenda like Europeans have an international European agenda, and that we can be bonded together politically, economically, culturally, religiously, and that we can truly come together as a people and go to the international table united who said himself, who you will hear from later on, has thanked the international community. And we must bring even more pressure in Dallas, and in Texas, and in America. Just as Pol uh, Polish Americans joined in with Lex Valenza, just as Chinese Americans joined in with Chinese students at Tiananmen Square, we as African people must join in.
He'll all come now because we give libation to the ancestors. By this libation, I give thanks and praise to his majesty as that he has first. For all about the foreign who are in blind and who are in the sound of my voice. I'll start to stand now. Let me give thanks. Give libation to our ancestors. Let the foreign community come forth. Yeah. 